question is done, Ms. Stark. No. No. No questions. You tell me. No questions? Everybody okay? You can go either way with these. You can convert them. Okay, the base of the log is the base of the exponent. It rarely is helpful if you do log equals exponent. So that it helps you. There's your exponent. Set that equal. So it, it kind of helps you get around that. Um, you can also use change of base to help you see if you get the same answer. If you raise 81 to the 1 fourth and get the rate, if you put in log base 81, now either use your change of base or drop it like this, log 3 over log 81, if that comes out to be 1 fourth, you did it right. So the reason they gave you all the parts to it was so that you could check it. You could see that it makes sense. This way you, you kind of see the sense in it. If they have you solve it, you don't really see that you're converting it. How about these guys? The negatives, be careful of the negatives. I just made them a little bit bigger. But I wanted you to I wanted you to convert log to exponent, exponent to log. I wanted you to get used to going back and forth. We very rarely, we very rarely take the exponent and make a log equation out of it. We take a log and make an exponential out of it. We use an exponential and convert it to a log using our rule, but we very rarely have to do it this way. But just to let you know which way you're going with that, that you can go back and forth. This one, they just wanted you to substitute in the x's, right? Substitute in for x, and then you solve this one. Doable? Doable. Okay. Now, transformation. You had to do your regular log, which we talked about yesterday and Friday, and we looked for an intersection point, one zero, and I said it's probably easiest to go off your one zero point. This one, be careful, because if this is a plus four, and you put this over here, you still have a negative in front of it. You're still going to have to reflect this first. And since it's not next to the x, it reflects with the y negative. So if your finger goes from y positive to y negative, where is your reflection? Over the x axis. So here it is. So I reflected it first, and then I shifted this guy up four. No, you're sketching. You're just sketching. Is it changing your domain? Nope. Did it change your range? Well, because we did a vertical shift, you would think yes. However, what's the range for a log? Or a real number? Now remember, you got to think opposite of what we did for x1. Opposite. So our range and our domain did not change at all. The domain is still zero. Your asymptote is still x equals zero. And your x intercept, and don't worry about your x, x intercept just now. We'll, we'll do them shortly. Um, if you can figure it out, I didn't change your logs and your bases or anything yet. So if you didn't, I didn't ask you to do x intercept. <coughs> okay, so can you do your transformation? Same as you do anything else. Your transformations look exactly the same. Sit with that piece of paper next to you with all the definitions on it. This one, you started with the basic log, and if you wanted to, you could take this piece and move it over here. Make it to be log plus 3. This gives me what? A vertical shift up 3. Very similar to something we just did before without the reflection. We have we shifted it up four. Did it change the domain? Nope. Did it change the range? Nope. Because our range was all real numbers. So these guys stayed the same. And if you use your one zero, it just kind of gives you a little reference on where you're going. And remember, we're sketching. So you want to stay just within where you're supposed to be. Keep track of your asymptote. That's the guy that's important because you don't want to cross that x-axis. Because according to this, you can't. So don't cross that x-axis. Now, 
if you did your x-intercept, where your x-intercept is over here, your y is equal to zero. If you can do this, that's fine. I flipped it back to a, an exponential equation. We're going to work more on your x-intercept soon because I want to make sure you can change your lab too. Question? This isn't the part you guys were having problems with, right? Okay. No, I said max a lot. And they work pretty much the same. Again, this one, this says, if you want to, bring this over here. So now you've got log base 8, no different than a base 2, it's just a little bit sharper, minus 2. So you've got a horizontal shift the opposite way, left, this is going to change your domain, and you've got a vertical shift down 2. Vertical shift won't change anything because you're all real numbers. But because your domain was 0 to infinity and you went left 3, now your new domain says negative 3 to infinity. Because your asymptote was x equals 0 and you moved it over 3, your new asymptote is x equals negative 3. Do it the same way we did the exponential one. Do it right on there. Like we're, you know, set it up that way. No, it, it was the original one is x equals zero. But because we shifted this left horizontally, we got to take three, we got to move it, three units. If you took this point, right, here's my original graph, and here's my one zero. If I move this to the left three, it's going to come out here at negative 2, 0. If I move this to the left 3, it's going to come here at x equals negative 3. See it? I have to move everything to the left 3. Okay. Your transformations are just slides. A reflection or a slide. Your translation was sliding. So I'm sliding this whole thing, everything that belongs to it, over 3. you have any questions? All right, this guy, again, if you want to put the plus 4 over here, it's easier. You're going to the right one. So if you have a horizontal movement, is it going to change the domain or the range? Domain. So now, if my domain was 0 to infinity, and I went to the right one, what's my new domain? 1 to infinity. If my asymptote was x equals 0, and I moved it to the right 1, what's my new asymptote? x equals 1. See it? Everything slides together. You're telling me to take this graph and slide this over 1. So I take my graph and I slide it 1. Everything slides with it. And then I'm going to add, there's my slide 1, and then I'm going to add 4. It just brings it up. That vertical shift is not going to affect your range because it's all real numbers to begin with. It's not going to affect your domain. The only horizontal movement affects your domain. Try not to memorize. Try to get a feel for this. Try to like physically move it. Say, I have to move to the right. Everything has to move to the right. Okay. There's like a blockade here. There's a blockade. Your graph is not going past that. So if you move everything left, everything has to go left. If you move everything right, everything has to go right with it. The up and down part here, this one's not a problem because your range was all real numbers. So nothing is going to affect your range and your vertical shift. And we'll catch the intercepts. I didn't have to do the intercepts. Now, these are your properties. How many of you actually look at your property sheet to do this? Good. These are your properties. Good. Now, but I told you, remember, you can get around this. The x, what, if the ln is my natural log, what's my base for my natural log? What's my base for log of nothing? 10. What's my base for an ln? E. So, if I change this to say E 
1 equals 0. And I do log equals exponent. It's base e to the 0 equals 1. You put your base there. It is a property that we have to get used to seeing. But can you flip this around? Yes. If I did this, log x equals 1. And I just put this in there. How would you flip this around? What's your base if I don't put a base in here? 10. So you say 10 to the 1 equals x. So if I say ln, what's your base? E. E to the 1 equals x. The same concept. If base for an ln is e, our base for a log is 10. We work in base 10. But our natural log is base e. So all you have to do is kind of play with these. These were all on your sheet with your properties. So I'm going to take this guy, watch, put the base of e, and say e to the 1 equals e. Oh, got it. Log is gone. This guy too. Base e. E to the 1 half equals this guy. Now, what you can do is, because these are equal, your 1 half half is the same as the square root. If I give you 4 to the 1 half, it's the same as saying square root of 4. Remember, it raises to the 1, and this one goes under the radical. So you can say either way. You can put this one as radical e. It's equal anyway. You don't even have to change it. But if you want it to have the same look, you can set it either way. Okay? Are you seeing these? You need to flip these around, just like you do a log. The base of an ln is always e. So again, put an e. e raised to this equals 9. I'm trying to use calculator. If it's not true, you didn't do it right. It has to work. They're giving you all the parts. So when you do it and you look at it, you can actually show yourself that it works. Okay, but these are your properties. So the one property that we really can't get around, that we really, really have to memorize, is this one right here. That the ln and the e will cancel out. And whether it's ln and e this way, that's going to cancel or e to the ln, that's going to cancel. It's just going to cancel itself out because they're inverses of each other. They come down to that identity one where the y equals x. They come down to that identity one. So it cancels itself out. Um, again, put the e here down here. e to the x equals e squared. Well, when your bases are the same, then your exponents are the same. Right? How you solve an exponential equation. Put a little e here. e to the negative x equals, now be careful of this guy, he's a negative in here. So e to the negative, oh sorry, e to the positive x. e to the positive x. Actually, if you can just get it through and we'll make it a negative, it'll probably look a little bit easier. e to the negative x equals e to the, when this has no exponent, it's 1. So once your bases are the same, then your exponents are the same. Okay. This is the one that you have to get used to seeing. As soon as you get an E and an LN together, it's going to cancel out. It's going to cancel out. Because they're inverses of each other. Make sense? Okay. Any other questions on these? And, you know, go over those properties. We're going to, like, be gone for a whole week in between. I don't want you to forget everything in our whole week. So go over those properties and make sure you understand them. Make sure you can relate to them. Now, get through this. Now, what happens when you change your base? We work in base 10. Your calculator, when you hit the log button, is base 10. It can't do base 4, base 2. As soon as you hit log, it says base 10. Two things. On the new calculators on the 84 with the new software. If you go to math and you come down to where it says, I think it says change base. It allows you, it will allow you to change it here and here. 
it will allow you to put that in. If, if you put a 4 and a 30, it will allow you to change the base. If you don't have this on your calculator, it's as simple as this. Make a line like this. Keep the 4 below the line. You have to say log 30 over log 4. This is your change of base form. So in your calculator, to do this without having a change of base formula, you just make the line, and they both have to say log. Log 30 over log 4. That will change the base to a base 10. That's our formula to change the base. If you need to put it in your y equal with an x in there, whatever we use in, in x in there, you can change the base up there as well. So if I give you this, log 5 of 25, how would I put this in my calculator? Good. Make a line, log 25 over log 5. And tell me what you get. Two. If you're just looking at this problem, can I also do this? Log 5, not, not graphing, just to put it in. Can I also do this? 5 to the x. Just to change it to an exponential equation, right? If I need to. 5 to the x equals 5 squared. And then I know what my x is. 2. Logs are exponents. So my exponent there is 2. Okay? So you have a number of choices. If you have to graph it, however, in your y equals... Then you have to change it. So say I wanted to graph <coughs> y equals log base 2 of x. Go to your y equals, and in your y equals, you put in uh, log, and I think it'll give you a parentheses around your log, over log 2. And that will graph log base 2. Log base 10 graphs the same way. It just graphs a little sharper, just like your exponential curves do. Make sense? You guys are also quiet today. Ah. Okay, now comes the fun part. Um, I gave you all the rules. I wrote, I copy, I gave you all my copy. Now, here is your rules that you have to remember for log. But, we know that logs are exponents, right? So, product rules. When I multiply the li like bases, what did I do to the exponent? Add them. How right? does so I added them? I added them. So therefore, when I see a multiply, these are two factors, because logs are exponents, I know to turn them into an add. So I separate them. I keep the same base, and I separate them. I wrote LNs right next to it so that you see they work the same way. Again, a product, a product here. I added my exponent. So a product, I will turn these into an add, just to get them separated. Okay? A quotient. What did I do to my exponents when I divided my right bases? You subtracted them. So therefore, on a quotient, that will turn them into a subtract. Whether it's with a log or an ln. Okay. These are very, just, just your basic rules. Then you have your power rule. This guy is the one that we use to get your exponent down when your exponent is a variable. This one's the most important one. Because most of the problems you will solve will be because you can't send this 7 to a base 2. You need to get this exponent down. So if I take the log of both sides, and then I can bring my exponent down. There's my power rule. I can take the ln of both sides, too. We're going to concentrate more on the equation probably when you come back from the break. Before the break, we're going to take apart these expressions, break them down, condense them back. So, 
our goal here is to take this down here. Now, if this says this, we have a, an extra little step here. So, Donovan, do you know our extra step before we can use our power wall? How do I do that? Where was the other side? There's no other side. <laughs> What's the exponent when you have the square root? One half. X to the one half. Okay, I changed the square root to an exponent of one half. Now I can bring this down. So it kind of gives us an extra step in here. We call this our radical step. We have to get rid of that radical. So what if I did this? What would I change these to? One third. One third. I can't change it to x cubed, right? Because that we have to say x cubed. It's one over. Remember when when you did this back in algebra? We did this in the beginning of this year. I said the one that is next to it stays raised to that power. The one that's underneath that radical goes underneath your fraction. That's a good way to remember it. It's underneath this radical thing. Let it go underneath here. This guy has to stay x to the 1. x to the 1 stays. And the 2 will go underneath. On the square root, there is a 2. It's just understood. We don't write it. So your radicals are going to change to fractions. So for a square root, this is going to change. Write this down, guys. For a cube root, this is going to change to x to the one third, because I know you're going to end up asking me. How about a fifth root, x to the what? Good. Oh. That's a pattern. How about this? What does this change to? Keep this one the same. Keep it raised to the two over three. Keep this one that's raised to it, keep it raised. Put the other one underneath it, okay? All right, so we got that down pat. All right, now, expanding your log. So, you work like you would be solving this. If I gave you a value for x and y, and you were plugging them in, you would work this backwards like you were solving this. So, what are we doing between these three things? What operation are we doing? Multiplying. When we multiply exponents like bases, what do we do? We add it. So the first thing we're going to do is separate this. Is it okay that I didn't write base 10? Yeah. I don't need to write base 10 for 10, right? Because that's the understood one. Now, what other rules can we use here? The power rule. So, we bring this guy down. So we end up with log 5 plus 3 log x plus log plus. For those of you that have to take the region, this is very good to do. I've got a lot of finger pointing going on back here. <laughs> okay. This is a really good lesson to help with the region. Okay. How about this guy? I substitute an x, I take the square root, I divide. The last thing I did was divide. That's the first thing I have to undo. So when I was dividing exponents, what was I doing? To, what that basis? What was I doing to the exponents? Subtracting. So I'm going to take this, even if it's ln, I say ln, let me keep the first one, minus ln 7. Now, I want to get that radical out of there. The radical, the square root, tells me to put what fractional exponent? Half. Half. Good. So I'm here. Then I need to use my power rule. Bring this guy down. Okay? We want to, we want to break these down. We're, we're going to break them down, and then we're going to work on building them up as well. Okay? 
right now these are expressions. So you can't do anything that's going to change the expression. When we have an equation, we work on breaking them down log log. We can get rid of your logs. We put logs on both sides. But expressions, we're just using your rules to go back and forth. So we could do it the opposite way, too. We could bring these back to what they used to be. First thing you look for is the last thing we did, right? We did the power rule last. First thing you look for is do you have any powers that have to go up? Bring this up. Bring this up. So I've got log base 10 of x to the 1 half plus log base 10 of x plus 1. Then what does the 1 half get me? Radical. So I've got log base 10 of radical x plus log base 10 of x plus 1. And I want to condense this down to okay. one to three. three. Oh, the three. I forgot the three. Thank you. Thank you. So now I want to condense this down to one term. So on an add, when I was adding exponents, what was I doing? Multiplying. So I bring out my log 10, and I set my factors up. Radical x times x plus 1 cubed. I'm just bringing my factors back to 1. I only write the logs one time. Because you started out with one log and you expanded it. Now we're condensing it back to one term. Make sense? Okay, LNs work the same way. First thing I need to do is pull up a power. When I was subtracting, like, the exponents, what was I doing to your bases? Dividing. Dividing. So now bring this out into a quotient, a division. This one over this one. You only bring out the ln once. Okay, so we can expand, we can condense. Okay, but you got to use your rules. I gave you all the rules for these guys. 